Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to look at the Hasbro, Marvel Legends, Spider-Man, No Way Home, Sandman. I got this guy because I thought he would be a perfect addition to my Clayface collection. A guy made of mud with different attachments on his hands. It is perfect. I produced this guy from Amazon and he arrived today. So let's take a look at the packaging. As you can see, it's on the old sort of retro style with a giant card back. Marvel Studios, Spider-Man, No Way Home, Ages 4 Plus, Marvel Legends, Marvel's, Sandman. Here he's in the package. Looks like he has a total of six hands and then a couple of different forearms to swap out. Totally made of clay. Looks perfect for my uses. On the back, you can see the three different Spider-Mans. Here's his barcode, in case that helps anybody. So with no further ado, Let's open him up. Alright, now that this figure out of the package, here he is with all his accessories laid out. He has four alternate hands, totaling six interchangeable hands, and then some extensions for his wrists. Surprised he doesn't have any other type of attachments. Before we take a look at all that, let's talk about and check out the figure. So this is Sandman from Spider-Man No Way Home. It's sort of the same Sandman from Spider-Man 3 all those years ago. And personally, my collection, I'm going to add this guy to my clay face shelf for obvious reasons. I mean, just look at him. He's made of sand, clay, or mud. He looks exactly like Clayface. He has large hands, extensions on his arms. Maybe I can find attachments from other figures for him. I do like the design of the Sandman. Kind of basic, but this is a more movie realistic version. And I have a couple of their Sandman figures. And most of them set my Clayface chef as well. So this guy is going to double up as two things in my action figure world. Number one, obviously, he's a Marvel Spider-Man villain Sandman, and a realistic version of that. But in my action figure collection, he's going to be more so used as a six-inch scale Clayface. Clayface is my favorite Batman villain. I have a whole shelf, in fact, two full of Clayface figures, and this guy will proudly join them. That being said, let's take a look. Starting with his face here. It looks pretty good. I don't remember the actor's name, but it was Lloyd from oh, that airplane show. And the likeness is a little bit there. The texture is pretty nice on him. He looks like he's made of mud. And that's perfect for Clayface, even though he's made of sand, but it's pretty much the same type of look. And it's not all one solid color. We have light brown, some dark brown, a little bit in between. Double jointed elbows, double jointed knees. It's a pretty plain, basic body. No clothing but no anatomy, perfect for Clayface. The actor's name is Thomas Hayden Church. He played Sandman in Spider-Man 3, and he played Lowell in Wings. And a closer look at his face and head sculpt, kind of basic, kind of good at the same time, perfect for my uses. And here's the figure, broken down as far as he can go with all of his removable parts detached. Now let's check out his accessories. And let's start off with his hands, which are pretty much the only accessories he comes with. He's a total of six hands, three right hands, and three left hands, and then a couple of extensions for his forearms. Here he is with his first pair of hands. These are his fists. And here he is with his second pair of hands. His right hand is a gripping hand, and his left hand is a little bit of a larger gripping hand. Could be a choking or holding hand. And here's his third pair of hands. These are the large, oversized hands, and they only work with the forearm extensions. As you can see, the wrist looks pretty bad right now. And here he is with the large hands and the forearm extensions. Looks really good. Smooth transition to the small arm and the large hands. And it's done in a very clever way. So you got the hand here with the peg. The peg is very long. It's going to go through. This simply covers up here on top of the original hole. The hand actually goes all the way through and connects into the original hole, giving it a lot of stability. So I have a bunch of different various attachments from previous Sandman figures. These are from Marvel Select, and they look really cool, but they're not going to fit with this guy. The pegs are almost the sort of opposite that he has. And then we have a little display base, bottom part of the Diamond Select Sandman, and a couple of the Marvel Legends ones. And those ones won't work, probably won't fit, but even if they did, it's a completely different color brown now that I've painted them. I saw somebody a while ago online pop off the torso of this Marvel Legends Sandman and put it onto the Diamond Select Toys large base here. It actually looks pretty cool, matches fairly well. It doesn't peg into him. 
I just simply put the torso and lay it on top. Still, I think it looks pretty nice and appropriate for Sandman and Clayface. Now they've taken a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories. Now for his height. From bottom to the top of his head, standing about 6.2 inches tall, which can translate to just under 16 centimeters. And now for his articulation. Starting with his head, of course you can rotate side to side. He can look up and down about that much, not too much. Tilt his head from one side to the other. Shoulders on a ball joint goes out a little bit more than 90 degrees. Up, down, around. Bicep cut below that. Double jointed elbows, they go all the way in. His wrist, you can rotate, and it's going to be hinged as well. He's got a ball joint in his torso. Rotate around, forward and back. Nothing going on in the waist here. Legs, completely does the splits, at least pretty close. Ball joints, they go forward, about that much. Back, not much at all. He's got the thigh cut, double jointed knees, and then his ankles, forward and back. Tilt rock, no real rotation there. Here's a look at the Sandman choking a Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. And here's the Sandman choking on Batman. Like I said, six inch scale Clayface taking on a six inch scale Batman. This is exactly what I got him for. Now let's check him out. Next is some other action figures. Starting off with some other Spider-Man Sandman figures. Here he is, next to both the Diamond Select Toys and Hasbro Marvel Legends Sandman. We have the movie version in the middle, then a comic version on the left, and an animated series version on the right. They're both in a sort of regular look, striped shirt. I use these as thugs, or gangsters, henchmen, regular civilian type characters in my extra figure world. And here, next to an older Marvel Legends Sandman, he has the attachments on his hands. I put a different head, actually a jigsaw head on him, and then painted them all brown, make him a clay face in my collection. Then. Next to a Hasbro Marvel Legends Build-A-Figure Sandman, I repainted this guy, sculpted a Clayface head on top of him, and bam, making him yet another Clayface in my collection. Now let's check him out, next to some actual Clayface figures. Here's the Hasbro Movie Sandman, next to a couple McFarland DC Multiverse Mega Figure Clayface figures. The one on the left came with the Batwoman Batman Clayface 3-pack, and the one on the right is a single Mega Figure. And here he is, next to a couple of DC Direct and DC Collectibles Clayface figures. Then, next to a bunch of different Mattel Clayface figures. And now, with some Kenner Clayface figures. And here, next to a bunch of other smaller Clayface figures. And these were perfect, because Clayface can pretty much be any size or shape he wants to be. These are Imaginax, Super Friends, Funko Pops, Spin Masters, and Mini Mates. In addition to these Hasbro Marvel Legends Sandman customs I turned into Clayface, I have even more custom Clayface figures. Here's a couple more custom Clayface figures made from his Marvel figures. On the left, we have a Clayface made from David Banner from the Incredible Hulk movie, and on the right, a Clayface made from The Thing. Here he is, next to a couple of crappier custom Clayface figures. I got these guys on eBay a long time ago, and I've kept them on my Clayface shelf ever since. And here he is, next to some other custom Clayface figures that I made. On the far left, we have the original first Clayface, Basil Carlo. And this is him before he was a clay monster, back when he was simply an actor that wore a clay mask and murdered people. Second one here is Sandman from the Spider-Man movie. This one can be Clayface 2, Matt Hagen. Then the third one is Preston Payne. He's the third Clayface, and he wears a protective suit to protect others from him because everything he touches melts and burns. And on the far right... The fourth Clayface, Sandra Fuller, Lady Clay. Here's a shot of my entire Clayface collection. One more to add to the mix. And here he is, next to Mattel DC Universe Classics Mud Splattered Batman. A great guy to fight against a Sandman, or rather Clayface figure. Now let's check him out, next to some other Hasbro Marvel Legends. Here he is with the other Spider-Man No Way Home figures that I got. Matt Murdock, and then Mary Jane. Those two can be civilians in my experience world. And then this guy, Clayface. I didn't bother getting the three Spider-Man figures. Even though they appear fantastic, I just don't really need them in my collection. Did consider getting them just for the unmasked head to make pseudo versions of those Peter Parkers. But like I said, unnecessary. And here he is, next to an older Toy Biz Spider-Man movie Tobey Maguire figure. It's the only Tobey Maguire Spider-Man figure that I have. He's super articulated. A little bit dated. But it's appropriate next to the Sandman. 
I'd like to keep checking him out next to some recently released Hasbro Marvel Legends. Here he is, next to a couple more Spider-Man villains. These are from the recent retro card wave. We have Jack o' Lantern and Tombstone. Then, next to the Joe Fixit and Patch 2 pack. And here, next to some more recently released Hasbro Marvel Legends. Now let's check him out. Next to some action figures from different various companies, so we can see how he fits in both scale and style wise. In case you want to know which lines you can mix him with, since he's a Hasbro Marvel Legends figure, they're typically the 6 inch scale. I'm going to start my comparisons with some of these smaller action figure lines I collect and work way larger. But first, let's check him out with some of his Hasbro brothers. In front of you, here he is, next to some G.I. Joe Classified, Power Rangers, and Fortnite Hasbro figures. All 6 inch scale. And now, with some Jazz Wars Fortnite figures, and some SH Figure Arts action figures. Here's Sandman, next to a thing of Saran Wrap. And here he is, next to some Mafex and Mattel DC figures. Then, with both some Jazz Wars and Mattel wrestling figures. And now, with some Mezco and NECA figures. Next, with some DC Direct and McFarlane toys. And finally, with some DST or Diamond Select toys, and some Jack specific wrestling figures. So overall, I think he's a really cool figure. He's a little bit underwhelming as Sandman. I wish he was a little bit bigger. Those are my only real complaints. I also wish he had more attachments and different sort of spike balls and hammers for his arms. But he's pretty cool. And he's really cool for me because Clayface is my favorite Batman villain. And I have this huge Clayface collection. And I have one more figure to add to the mix. Now, I imagine most of you, when you look at this guy, you don't think Clayface. But I damn sure do. That was the first thing I thought of when I saw his figure tease. I was like, hell yeah, I'm totally getting that guy. Sculpt and paint job are pretty good. A little bland at times, but I like it. I mean, you can't add too much excitement if you're doing a pure brown sand type character, but they added a good texturing and different sort of layers of brown. His accessories, a bunch of different hands, but I really appreciate the big hands, they're cool. His articulation is everything you'd expect from a Hasbro Marvel Legends figure. If I were to rate this guy, I'm going to give him a 7.5 out of 10, and maybe I'm giving him a little bit higher rating than he deserves because I really like the figure, I really like Clayface, and he's a great addition to the collection. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I will talk to you guys real soon.